Hello everyone, uh, I'm Yen Che from UMass Amherst and I will present our work and a sentence free approach to the dynamic truncation of rent list. And this work is done with my then mate Daniel Cohen and my advisor Bruce Croft. Um, let me start it from the goal in this task. And our goal is to find a good truncation point for the rent list and just show only the items above this cutoff. But the point is, uh, why this is important? And I will show the reason by some examples. Uh, this is the first example. Uh, this is just the e-commerce service. And you can see that it has uh, two kinds of platform. One is uh, just a computer browser, and the other one is the conversational app on the mobile device. And you can imagine that if you use a computer, uh, it will show many results, and you just scroll down your uh, window to browse it. But if you use a conversational app and ask uh, what is a good item, and you will expect that they just uh, it just give you maybe three or four items, and you will expect that it should be very precise. So even uh, both of the application can use the stem ranking function, but uh, the cutoff should be different because you you only need to show uh, four very precise three or four very precise item on the mobile device. So uh, the information need is different, the scenario is different. And the other totally different application is patterns retrieval. In the pattern retrieval, people expect that uh, the application can give us a big set, but we expect the recall is very high because we don't want to miss any, any cases. So uh, we don't expect it just give three or four because we know uh, it's not only that. So it's a totally different case uh, from the previous one. From these two cases, we just know when your scenario of information need is different, where to truncate becomes very crucial. So that's why we do this task. Next, uh, I just show the more, for more problem formulation of uh, this task. And I will start it from the demonstration. Uh, assume you have a query queue and the ranking function gives you a ranking list D, like, like this list. And you have a one evaluation matrix you focus on, uh, just call C. And when your cutoff is different, the C is different. You can see that if the cutoff is 2, the C becomes 0 0.3, and your cutoff is 4, the C will be 0 0.8, and so on. And we, ex we expect our model to, keep, to tell us that uh, the optimal cutoff is 4, because the C is the highest. Uh, this is uh, just a more formal mathematical formulation for this concept. But uh, just to simplify it, uh, the goal is for each query queue, we want to find the minimum cut of k, such that the matrix is maximized. Next, I will introduce the, our model to solve this problem and record it by cut. Before we introduce the by cut, uh, I want to introduce some previous work first. Uh, one previous work also focused on this uh, problem, and it used the it assumed that the score distribution follows some uh, uh, parameterized distributions, and it do some analysis to validate it. And after that, it used the EM algorithm to estimate the cutoff value. And yeah, it give me a very important idea is that the whole score distribution correlated to the position of the good cutoff, uh, good cutoff value. But uh, this method is limited by its parameterized distribution because uh, you, can, you can just assume that the score need to be follow some distribution. So if one day the score doesn't follow this distribution, the method is not working. And because of this limitation, it, it can be uh, optimized for the F1 score. So uh, according to the methods pros and cons, we propose our solution by cut. 
And the two properties of my card is, uh, the first is we regarded the problem as a sequential decision problem, and we used an R model to model it. So the advantage is uh, we, we can explore the whole score distribution as the previous works they did. But uh, different, from the, different from that one, our method is assumption free. We don't hold any assumption of the score's uh, distribution. Just let the model to uh, find a good fit. Uh, this is a, a diagram of our model, and I will explain the property of our model by this image. First, uh, we sequentially feed the rank list uh, to the model by the order of the rank list. So first, uh, just feed the top one, then feed top two, and feed top three. And the model also sequentially predict uh, it is a cutoff or it is not. So uh, in this example, we feed the, the first one and say that uh, it's not cut off, and the second is not, third is not. And when we feed the fourth supplement, uh, the model thinks that, oh, you, sh uh, you should be stopped. So just told me the, four, uh, the first one is the cut off, and the return the top three to the user. And to handle this kind of sequential input, we use a bidirectional LSTM and just try to model this kind of uh, distribution. So uh, because we, have, uh, we use the sequential input and we use a bidirectional LSTM, so under this kind of scenario, when it makes prediction at some point, maybe at the position three, uh, the whole distribution will be considered because it is a bidirection. So at the position three, the forward and backward uh, are both considered. So we consider the whole distribution and give the prediction. And the different thing is that uh, we use the, we just use the ML-based method to optimize the model. So uh, the model will just find a good fit through the optimization. Uh, we don't hold any assumption. We don't we don't assume that the score should follow some distribution. Just let it feed it. And the other advantage is that uh, our model can can be compatible with a uh, custom loss function if it is a, a differentiable this wise loss function for the LSTM model. So uh, to show this compatibility, uh, we designed two kinds of loss function. And the first, uh, I don't have time to show the mathematical detail, but you can recall the first one is the approximated uh, F1 loss. And the second loss is uh, try to penalize the too much result, so it tends to give a short list. And next I will show our experiment result, setting the result. Uh, for the experiment, we evaluate our method on a robust 04 data set. And first we restrict top 300 uh, document by some rank function and predict a cutoff for it. And the ranking function we adopt, uh, we adopt two kinds of it. Uh, the first one is BM25 as a representative of the traditional IR, and the second one is the DRNN as uh, for the neural IR. And we compare our method to some baseline. The first one is just fix the cutoff value to uh, 5, 10, and 50. And the second one is just greedy choice of the training data. And the third one is just previous work. Uh, also, we have a two kind of setting for the white card. The first one, we just feed the ranking score. And the second one, we add some uh, document statistic, like a document lens or average IDF. And here is the result. Uh, for the result, uh, I will show the two main observation. The first observation is that uh, our method outperform the other baseline, and yeah, the statistic uh, 
make some make some effect, but not so much. The score itself is uh, very good, but yeah, the statistic is also helped. And the second one is the interesting one. You can see that uh, the previous work, uh, it works for the BM25, but uh, in the case of DRMM, uh, it fails to give a good cutoff because uh, the distribution of DRMM score doesn't follow uh, their assumption. But uh, our model, because we, we, our model is assumption free, so it works well for both. Okay, uh, the conclusion is uh, by card is a very effective model, it's our model with a, a flexible cost function and you can give a good cutoff for the custom measurement metrics. And yeah, it's worth well for di different measurement metrics that you can write it as a loss function of the machine learning. Okay, uh, last thanks to ATMSIG IR to providing uh, student travel grants and thanks for your listening.